Uh, Chris serves as a lead advocate at the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey and the Pennsylvanians for Medical Marijuana. He also serves on the board of Philadelphia Normal in Normal, New Jersey, and was the founder of Normal's highly rated podcast back when he was based in, in uh, Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, Chris, uh, tell us about New Jersey and uh, Philly. Thanks so much. Hello, yes. Pot. Pot is not just for California anymore. I, you know... <laughs> We've had, a, we've had a long, wonderful tradition with marijuana on the East Coast, but really in the last couple of years, we've seen a whirlwind of reform activity. Um, on the East Coast, we are bound to the legislative process. We do not have a ballot initiative process that we can employ to change law or bring up new law. But I'll tell you what, this year we've seen something really revolutionary happen in Philadelphia. So I am the bearer of, of good and bad news. I'm sure you've heard about New Jersey's medical marijuana law, and I'm working very hard on this with Ken Wolski at the Coalition for Medical Marijuana in New Jersey. Ken's been at these conferences. He attends the Patients Out of Time conference. He's a registered nurse and the director of our coalition. But I have to tell you, and we'll get into this in just a second, New Jersey is about to run a revolution on medical marijuana, and it's not a revolution any of us are going to be real happy with. Um, you know, we'll talk about. I'm going to talk about the good stuff first. Right here on the screen, you will see the July issue of Philadelphia Magazine. They interviewed women for the Pot is Back. Now, all of us are saying, "Well, where did Pot go? It didn't go on vacation." You know, <laughs> Pot's always been around, but it looks like the media in Philadelphia, and New York, and New Jersey are just finally starting to wake up with the, to the fact that they can cover this. That this is an issue that isn't just in California. This is an issue that exists around them every day. What Philadelphia Magazine went out and did was interview yuppies smoking pot on the main line in Philadelphia after work. Bankers, uh, a lot of women, uh, I hate to use the term, but sort of the, the stiletto stoner kind of an interview is what this turned into be. Myself and State Senator Dalen Leach were the only people quoted with our real name in what was a long feature-length article here. They also sampled the local marijuana in Philadelphia and did a write-up of that, which was good stuff. But... This was an innovation, I'll tell you. Yeah, and it wasn't very savvy. The guy starts out the article and he says, I'm a cop, but I can get, you know, I, I, I look like a cop, but I can get great marijuana around Philadelphia. Well, I'm here to tell you, if you don't look like a cop, you can get even better marijuana around Philadelphia. So, you know, and actually it was the Philadelphia police that we worked really closely with this year, and I have to thank Harry Levine for his support. You know, we pointed out the racial disparity on the arrests in Philadelphia this year, and the city responded positively to this. It was the first time that we really reached out to municipal government, and they sort of reached out back to us and had a change. So let's talk a little bit about that. Pot is back in Philadelphia and New Jersey, folks, as you can see on this magazine here. New Jersey passed a medical marijuana law. That's right there at the State House. That's our Senator Nicholas Scateri of New Jersey. Um, I had just had a meeting with him a couple of weeks ago. New Jersey has a new resolution right now to support H.R. 2835. New Jersey could be the first state to, so, to pass a resolution to support the federal Medical Marijuana Patient Protection Act. Of course, it's sponsored by Barney Frank. He's a New Jersey boy. He was born in Bayonne. We're in touch with Congressman Frank to do some appearances in New Jersey about the new resolution. That's the good news. The bad news is we passed a medical marijuana law this year that is the most restrictive in the nation. And in implementing this law, we are up against one of the biggest hurdles I have seen in the marijuana movement thus far. New Jersey is a unique place to have a medical marijuana law pass. It is where four of the seven largest pharmaceutical companies in the world are based. It is a state that has unique state regulations that exist for this medical and pharmaceutical industry in order to work with the state and these entities and the universities and everything like that. You might have heard that they were going to give a monopoly production contract to Rutgers University this year. But it wasn't really just Rutgers University. It was Rutgers University and a couple of small companies that already work on plant-based pharmaceuticals through clinical trials. And they were really going to try this. And what's going to be next for New Jersey? They're working on the implementation of the medical marijuana law. They are proposing that six alternative treatment centers serve the entire state of New Jersey. They are still moving towards a centralized production of medical marijuana. What will that mean? Well, we as advocates have our foot in the door, but we need a little help pushing behind us or the door is going to close right on our foot because other than us lobbying the state government, we have the heavies. The medical and the pharmaceutical industry in New Jersey are about to sink a test well into medical marijuana, and it could be approved right through the state law. 
You know, if it weren't for the tenacity of this Democratic senator from New Jersey, they would have written Rutgers University into the law, and we'd all be turning around going, well, what happened? And that is the truth of what's happening in New Jersey right now. It doesn't receive the attention that it deserves. And because it's so quiet through this implementation phase, it's just what these corporate interests want. I want to go back to this slide here. That's us in front of the State House. You know, with a few press conferences, Ken Wolski, our patient population of New Jersey, an MS patient who went on trial named John Wilson, we've garnered significant media attention, and we turned the corner on the Rutgers University idea. But our governor, Chris Christie, Republican governor of New Jersey, think of him if you've ever seen The Sopranos. He's sort of like Tony Soprano mixed with Carl Rove. You know, that's, that's what we have as our governor in New Jersey. This guy's a former U.S. attorney. He says he believes in medical marijuana, but he wants to do it right. Now, the New Jersey State Teaching Hospitals Association was going to get the monopoly contract on distribution. Their representative, Rick Goldstein, no relation, showed up at the High Times Medical Cannabis Cup, and he found every grower he could, and he asked them, if you could only grow three strains of marijuana, what would they be? And I think you all know what that means. The centralization, the homogenization of medical marijuana could start in New Jersey. And I think that the interest that we are fighting against is that small business and this movement and the ideal of medical marijuana needs to be reinstilled here. Medical marijuana is a challenge to the health care system of America overall. It requires doctors and patients to talk to each other. It requires doctors to go and look up specific information. It requires a real relationship. This is not the health care that we have today, where you go in and you speak to your physician for five minutes and get prescribed a pill. They want to do that with medical marijuana. They want some sort of consistent, homogenized brand for this that doctors are comfortable with. This comfort zone of the medical industry is what we're fighting against. But I think that in New Jersey, we are working hard to meld these ideals. It is inevitable that corporate interests are going to get involved with medical marijuana. I'm not going to be able to fight them in New Jersey. Our nonprofits there, as hard as we work and as, as hard as our volunteers work, we're not going to be able to fight that interest in New Jersey. And it's inevitable that they're going to get involved nationally. The question is, do we have a place at the table, or do they try and take it over 100%? And the models in New Jersey have already been taken on in Washington, D.C. Two ounces, no home cultivation. Believe me, we're not happy about this law, and we're fighting to change it every day. But, again, the inevitability of corporate interest seeing and counting their coin on medical marijuana right now in New Jersey is the reality. How this is going to play out, I wish I could tell you here at the conference today, but we will see it happen over the next six months. Now, let's talk about happy stuff. That is the district attorney of uh, Philadelphia, standing with myself and the uh, radio producer, Marty Moscowine of Radio Times in Philadelphia. He is the first African-American district attorney in Philadelphia's history, Seth Williams. He was elected this year. And we eased the possession penalty for all Philadelphia residents this year it was through one set of data, three meetings with city officials and police, and this gentleman right here seeking the support of the state Supreme Court. Philadelphia was the last county in Pennsylvania that required every single person who was caught with any amount of marijuana from a joint to 30 grams to be prosecuted through the court to make a $300 bail hearing and to show up for criminal prosecution even if they were going to take a disorderly conduct plea. 4,700 cases a year. 75% black men between the age of 19 and 35. Only 10 white women a month are cited for marijuana possession in Philadelphia. Now, I'm Philly normal. I can find more than 10 white women smoking pot walking in the city for like 10 minutes, you know? <laughs> But the truth is, is that Philadelphia police only find 10 white women a month, but they find 362 black men a month to cite for marijuana possession less than 30 grams. The procedure before was go to court, make bail. The procedure now, starting in June, is that you go into a diversion program. 
At the point of arrest, you are offered the diversion program. You no longer have to make bail. You show up in court, you pay a $200 fine, and it is automatically expunged from your record. This is a tangible change for the marijuana consumers of Philadelphia this year, and this has been of positive benefit. I cannot even tell you how many people hug me at concerts and thank me because they were in the – they are like, God, I got busted last year, but this year it was so different. So, But, I, you know – it's Seth Williams and Harry Levine who's sitting out here. I have to tell you, if weren't Harry's data and his work in New York, you know, and knowing how to pursue that and getting the data and really highlighting the racial disparity, you know, this is the key for us on the East Coast. This is where we found police and prosecutors and city officials. There was no argument back from them. There is no opposition to the racial disparity argument. It's bad any way you look at it. It's a problem that people want to solve, and it's our job to give them the tools to do that. Oh, yeah. Okay. So New York this year, just so everybody didn't miss, there was the National Normal ad ran in Times Square. That's me and Rick Cusick and uh, Steve Bloom from Celeb Stoner and Danny Danko from High Times Magazine. We went up there. It was running. We waited in the afternoon. It ran on this big screen. So we had to wait for the 15 seconds to take the picture. But National Normal Times Square this year had an ad. Millions of people saw it this year. And you know what? It's not like people are going, oh, my God, there's a marijuana leaf on Times Square. People see that come up, and they cheer. And that is what is happening on the East Coast, folks. We had a uh, 1,200 people march up South Street this year for the Global Cannabis March. It was uh, an excellent parade. I think that was a video. It didn't quite start yet, though. Let me see if I can get it to start. Starting? No. It's okay if it doesn't start. Uh, it was our biggest march ever. There were no arrests at the, at the annual Cannabis March this year. I want to let people know that while the focus of reform activity is rightfully so on California this year, that New Jersey and Philadelphia have seen tremendous uh, strides forward. There is a medical marijuana bill in Pennsylvania right now, HB 1393. We got it introduced in the House and the Senate. Just three weeks ago in Pittsburgh, we had special hearings where we Skyped in Lester Grinspoon, which was awesome. We had Dr. Cyril Wecht, a forensic pathologist, testify that in over 38,000 autopsies, cannabis was never a cause of death. Of course we know that, but it's important to hear that. I, you know, and I know it may seem passe to a lot of folks who have already won these battles in other states, but this is a discussion that never happened in the Keystone State. They never had a bill in Pennsylvania ever before this year, and it's a discussion people want to have. Eighty percent of Pennsylvanians support medical marijuana from both parties. It is the most strongly supported Republican public policy issue in the state of Pennsylvania. People think amongst the Republicans and Democrats that medical, the medical marijuana bill is more positive than any candidate for governor, any candidate for Congress, than the job of the legislature. What we need to do is run medical marijuana for office, and we win every single seat, you know? But that is that is really what's happening. You know, in Pennsylvania, people need to wait. You know, it's hard for people to handle this. Look, politicians get a 37, 40 percent approval rating on a poll, and they're popping champagne bottles and trying to have sex with the interns in the office. Eighty percent is something that they don't know how to handle. It is the most popular public policy issue the state of Pennsylvania has ever polled is this medical marijuana bill. Politicians, politicos, people in the state house and the media struggle with the popularity of medical marijuana on this basis. Now, it's our job to make sure that marijuana law reform, whether that be decriminalization, legalization, or medical marijuana bills, we need to turn this corner with the politicos in America, especially the state legislators. This medical marijuana is not controversial. 80% approval rating? Give me a break. This is the most positive political capital you can have in America today. If you want to win elections, you need to support marijuana reform. And that's the message we're going to take out there of the East Coast. Thank you, everybody.